Yeah, hello, I'm Silas Pease. I'm a deputy news editor with the Glasgow Guardian, and I'm here with the Labour candidate for Glasgow Kelvin, Pam Duncan Glancy. Why should Glasgow students vote for you? Well, first of all, um, I think it's important to say that the way that students have been treated in the past year um, has been absolutely shocking. Um, they, they were asked to come back to, to the halls, be away from their family and their friends, um, and then basically isolated there. Um, and I feel that that was a really um, that was a real shame because it left people without the mental health support they need um, and quite quite lonely and isolated at times. So um, the way they've been treated is, is an absolute disgrace. Um, people, uh, students should vote for, for me in Glasgow Kelvin and for Scottish Labour this time around if they want an absolute focus on recovery in our NHS and our health and social care service, if they want a recovery in our jobs, if they want a recovery in our communities, a recovery in our climate. Th those are the reasons why they should absolutely vote. Um, Labour in this election and they should use both their votes for Labour in this election because the constituency and the list vote matters. Um, me specifically, um, I'm doing this because I'm an equality and human rights activist. I've been campaigning for equality and human rights my entire life. Um, I want the opportunities that I had, um, which was, um, I, I'm old enough now to remember um, the last Labour government, um, and I had a Labour government at the time, and I had a government that was on my side, and that meant I was able to go to university, I was able to go to mainstream school, I had the care and support that I needed, but since then things have got a heck of a lot worse. Disabled people are not getting the support that they need, there are no jobs available for um, people who are leaving university or college, and um, housing costs have risen, uh, record numbers of people um, are in poverty, child poverty is at a record high. All of those things are in play now and because of that people don't have the same opportunities that we that we once had and uh, I want that for everyone. I want people to have the opportunity to live up to their own potential. And um, so if people want to vote for someone who um, hasn't been a politician before but um, has has campaigned uh, for, for students rights and for workers rights and for equality and human rights all, all their life and has fought for those things then they should vote for me in Glasgow Kelvin. Uh, Glasgow Kelvin has swung in favour of the SNP in the past two Scottish parliamentary elections. Uh, how will you try and bring support back to Labour this time around? I think simply by offering our, our policy platform that, that helps them understand that we're on their side. Um, so we will crack down on unscrupulous landlords, we'll end zero hours contracts, and um, we'll create a national care service that pays carers £15 an hour, um, and that is free at the point of delivery, which is incredibly important because the SNP have said um, that they have removed social care charges for under 65s but in actual fact what they've done is um, they've retained them in some parts of the system so for example if you get independent living fund that the SNP and the Scottish government um, manage you still pay social care charges so um, they've, they've managed to in, for, for whatever reason convince a lot of people that actually um, what they've said they're going to do or what they've done um, in, in the past is, is good for them. But when you, when you look at the stats, when you look at the reality, and you heard this last night um, in, in the debate as well, if anyone who was watching it, um, the SNP's record um, is awful. They've had 14 years in government. Um, we've had a failing education system where, where students were let down last year. Um, and people in our poorest areas were given lower grades purely because of where they live. We've had an NHS that has failed to meet its waiting time targets, a mental health service that is simply not funded to the extent that it should be. We don't even keep up pace um, with mental health funding in the rest of the UK. So, I mean, that, that is embarrassing when you can look to the Tories and see that, the, that their mental health funding is, um, is better off than ours in Scotland. So all of these things, I think people are beginning to see that the SNP is not on their side. Um, what the SNP has done in the past 14 years is focused strongly on independence and forgotten about the real things that matter. And last night, Nicola Sturgeon said she took her eye off the ball um, when it came to drugs deaths. Well, she's taken her eye off a number of balls. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, I mean, drug death crisis that we've had in this country is an absolute disgrace. Um, and it's a tragedy. Every single one of those deaths are preventable. But she's also taken her eye off the ball in education, the area that she said was most important to her. And people are beginning to see that concerned about their job prospects post-COVID. How do you believe your party helps with this issue? I think that um, one of the, the, the biggest opportunities we have right now is because we have to do things differently. So this pandemic has taught us that things need to be different. And actually it's taught us that we can do things differently. So for a disabled person, for example, I've argued for a long time that we should have um, the right to be able to work at home if we need to. And we should be able to use technology to meet our access requirements. Um, and consistently people have, have said, oh, uh, you know, working at home, working out in technology, that's not really the solution. And here we are, um, everyone's working at home and technology is the solution. So there is innovation out there. So we need to build on this. We need to use this moment now. And we can't go back to normal because normal was, was full of poverty and inequality for far too many people. We have to go forward to better. So for me, what that means is um, the opportunity to create 
um, unionised, well-paid and green jobs. Jobs in the care sector, where we know as well um, that there is a, a huge um, gap in provision that we need, that, that we need more people in our care sector. Um, and we need them to be paid £15 an hour minimum because they're the people who've come out every day, day in, day out, supported people like me who need social care during this pandemic. Um, we need more people in our medical sciences, we need more people in our in our hospitals and in the NHS, um, all across the, the, the NHS sector, not just um, as doctors and nurses, but also in our allied um, health professions, and that's what the Labour Party will do. So we'll increase recruitment into those areas um, and fund more places so that people can go to college and university in those areas and create the, the jobs of the future. Um, the National Care Service that we said that we will build um, is a massive opportunity for job creation because we know that we're going to need more carers into the future. And the more that we put, the, the, the bigger the care service that we create and the more people we support and the more people who use social care, we can get into jobs as well. Do you think that adequate support has been given to students? No, 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 absolutely not. Um, they've not had the funding that they need. Um, they, were, they, they didn't get the guidance they needed in terms of whether they should be going to their jobs. So they were brought back to, brought back to, to university, but then they couldn't necessarily go to, go to work because they were told to stay in the halls. Um, they, they didn't get the mental health support that they needed because, again, as I said earlier about the, the funding in our mental health services, um, and they didn't get the advice and support that they needed on campus because there wasn't that available for them. And um, the education that they got, I know that teachers and lecturers um, across universities and colleges all across Scotland, but in particular in Glasgow, have worked solidly to do their best, to give the best education that they can to students. But it's just so difficult to try and learn in the circumstances that students have been put in, not least because they've had to do it um, electronically, but because of the conditions they've been living in. And um, for, for years, I mean, we need to, I think we need to remember that, that students have been let down by this government before the pandemic as well. So um, they allowed rents to rise to the point that students were living in accommodation that was unsuitable. Um, they allowed zero hours contracts to be considered a positive destination from university or college. So they allowed all of this to happen before the pandemic came in. Um, and they've been massively let down since then. We've talked about this uh, briefly before. Uh, mental health services have been severely underfunded, especially at university. How do you plan on addressing Scotland's mental health crisis? First thing that we would do is bring up our um, percentage of funding for the, the mental health within the NHS in line with the rest um, other, other parts of other parts of the UK. So we would increase it to at least 11% um, and grow it beyond that. We would have a mental health practitioner in every GP surgery. We would give a right to access a counsellor in every school for pupils um, so that they get the support that they need to come, um, to come through the pandemic and, and move forward. And we would make sure that the waiting times for mental health services, in particular child and mental health services, the CAM service in Scotland, um, were drastically reduced because so many people have been waiting for too long for this. And as we come out of this pandemic, mental, as, you know, as I've said it before, but I'll say it again, our mental health services were, were gutted to the core before the pandemic. Um, during the pandemic, it will have, our mental health crisis, I think, will have gotten considerably worse because of the, the, the last year. We really are going to have to get on top of this if we're going to be able to come out of it and create a Scotland where, where all of us can live up to our full potential. Uh, expanding to the NHS at large then, uh, Scottish Labour have said that they are committed to increasing support for the NHS. Could you explain this stance a bit further? We, we know that the staff who have been working um, throughout the whole year in the, in the NHS throughout the pandemic are probably going to be some of the same staff who are going to help us get our cancer treatments back on track, help us get our elective surgery back on track. So those people need supported and they need supported now. We can't wait for that because it, they're knackered, <laughs> weren't they? Um, I work in the NHS, I've seen it. Um, it's, it's been quite a year. Um, and, and I think that we need to remember that. So first of all, we would pay them properly. Um, to, to give a 1% pay rise was an, was an insult. A 4% pay rise the night before the, the election short started um, was, was frankly an election giveaway that um, is quite unfair and disrespectful. Um, and also doesn't come nearly close enough to the sort of rise that people need given the number of um, the, the cuts or the low rises that they've had in the past, past few years. So it's that kind of thing, we, we, need to, we need to get on top of that because we need our NHS staff to feel valued. But we also need to start building more capacity within the NHS to be able to support us. And when the pandemic hit, our NHS had, had experienced huge cuts, um, be that through uh, local drug partnerships, mental health services. As a result of that, it, it was fighting for its life when, when it was trying to save ours and we can't let that happen again. So we would increase, as I said earlier, recruitment into the NHS 
um, in Scotland, we would make sure that the staff who work in it just now have options to change their working pattern so that they can continue to give what they want to um, to our NHS, but so that they can do it in a way that supports their well-being too, because their well-being is incredibly important as well. Um, our National Care Service would support the National Health Service because it would be there for people. Um, and actually, we know that when social care is right, we do prevent um, access, some, some things from uh, escalating to go into our health service. But also, it means that when, when people do enter the health service or they become ill or sick, um, or they're, they, they sustain an injury, we know that they can then come out of hospital and have a care service that is there, that's fit, fit for purpose, that values their human rights and that pays the staff properly. Uh, the climate crisis is obviously a very pressing issue right now. Uh, what actions do you plan on taking uh, to tackle it in Scotland? So um, the climate crisis, I, I fundamentally believe that we cannot have social justice if we don't have climate justice. Um, and so that's why it's integral to a lot of a lot of what Labour's plans will be in, and our manifesto will be announced next Tuesday. So um, you'll, you'll be able to see some of the detail in there. But I know, for example, um, that, that we support a Green New Deal. And what that means is that we support good, well-paid, unionised green jobs, that we do that with a just transition because it isn't OK for us to say to the workers who um, work in some of our carbon heavy industries today that they won't have the jobs of tomorrow. So we need to create the jobs of tomorrow and then support that, that transition into the new workforce. Um, and we will do that. Uh, we'll do that um, also within um, the, the, house, the house building and the house upgrade systems that, that we'll put in place. So we will build more social housing, um, which will be cheaper and more affordable, and therefore um, will also be more sustainable. We'll make sure that we'll um, upgrade existing homes. So we'll, we'll have a huge investment into double glazing and into sustainable energy that will bring costs down for people in our communities, but also that will mean that we will begin to meet, um, come close to meeting our targets. Um, on, on climate change because if we don't um, if we don't meet them we're not going to leave um, the sort of society planet and country that we need for the future for our children so we have to do this this isn't a choice um, well, it should, I mean it would be a choice but it isn't a choice we have to do it anyway um, and we will also address um, our public transport issues so we'll make sure that our new public transports um, are far more sustainable they're accessible and they're affordable and we'll create free bus travel for under 25s in the first instance um, and we'll move that to, to the rest of the population as soon as possible and we'll nationalise the railway um, and not in the way that the, um, the Scottish Government or the SNP did recently which was to do it at the very last minute we've been asking for this to be done for years and um, I also know that, uh, for example, Abelio staff are now threatening to strike because they, they were instructed that they weren't to get a pay rise before it was brought into public ownership in the next few months. That's because their version of nationalisation is not ours. Our, our version of nationalisation is doing it for the public good and not for profit. So that means making sure that we have well-paid, unionised jobs, accessible and affordable services where and when you need them in a sustainable um, a, a sustainable. I also fundamentally believe that we should be a, a country that will welcome climate refugees as well. Um, I would like to see us having that much more outward looking focus um, on our climate um, on our climate approach. To what role do you believe the Scottish Government should play at university? Um, well, I think that, that they have a, a huge role to play. So not only do they have a role in determining um, the sort of funding and support the students will get, so Scottish Labour, as you may have heard last night in the debate, um, would have a minimum income guarantee and that would of course extend to students. Um, we, the, the Scottish Government should be making sure that our universities are not run for profit, but they're, that they're run for education and public good. Um, we, should be, we should be making sure that where they use procurement within our universities, that they do that in a fair and sustainable way, so that through any, any government funding that goes to universities should be made sure that um, if they, they use that to employ people or to, to create services, that those services and those employment opportunities um, increase representation in the workforce, end zero hours contracts, play the, pay the living wage. And that's the power of, of the government. We can we can ask these organisations, massive organisations, who of course are big employers in Kelvin, um, to do that. And we can use those as, as anchor institutions to improve the lives of people across Scotland. A recent internal report revealed huge racial problems at the University of Glasgow. And last year, an internal review of the Police Scotland found racial bias. How do you plan on helping Scotland become a safe space for people of colour? Well, I think we have to do several things. I think the first thing we have to do is leadership. We absolutely have to call out racism when we see it. Um, and I was, I was actually gutted. I, mean, I know, I know, as, as someone who's, who's campaigned for the quality and human rights um, for, for years and years and years, I, I know how bad it is. But still, when I see statistics like that, I'm still, I'm still shocked and gutted when I, when I see it. Because you think that institutions like universities should probably know better. 
Um, but actually, if we cannot get our universities right, how can we ever get our education? How can we ever get our employment sector right as well? Because actually, this is a huge part of getting into employment as we go forward. So we really need to address this. So it starts by being um, absolutely vocal when we see it. So, for, for example, when the, the racial report came out last week, um, a lot of nonsense about saying that there was no institutional racism in this country. Institutional racism exists in this country, and we need to we need to tackle that. So that means using, as I said earlier, the power of things like procurement to say you will open up job opportunities to people of colour, you will open up job opportunities to disabled people and LGBT plus people, because we have to fix it by design. The default, unfortunately, um, in a lot of cases, is inequality, and we must fix it by design using things like positive action. We, every single leader um, and arm of government that we have at our disposal. As a candidate, I'd like to know, uh, what issues do you feel you're most passionate about? Um, I was asked this the other day, actually, and said that what are the first things you would do in Parliament? And I thought, oh, here we go. This is like, I've literally wanted to, to change the lives of so many people for so long. So um, to pick a few is difficult. Um, but uh, being given the, the social security brief for Scottish Labour is a real privilege um, and an honour because right now as we come, or as we are in the pandemic, but as we come through this pandemic, social security will be more important than ever. So um, one of the things I really, really want to focus on um, in the new parliament, if I'm going to be elected, is a minimum income guarantee, because I believe that we cannot, we, we, well, for a start, if we're going to meet the poverty targets that we all agreed to across parties, if we're going to meet our climate targets, we're going to have to change the way we do things. We can't continue to do things in the same um, the way of all because we won't meet these targets. So we need to do things like have a minimum income guarantee. That means good, well-paid jobs. It means bringing housing costs down, and it means putting money in the pockets of people that are furthest from economic inequality. And that's the kind of vision of social security I would have. Um, it means topping up for some people who are furthest from economic equality. For example, students, for lone parents, for disabled people, people of colour, um, and people with no recourse to public funds. So all of these things I would want to focus privately on um, in, in Parliament. I'd also, I'm really incredibly passionate about a national care service. And one of the first things that I did um, as, as a political activist was um, to campaign um, on a thing called On, on the Breadline. And it was about um, how charges for social care were putting people into poverty. Um, and it still, they, they, they still exists um, despite significant um, pledges by various uh, governments about social care being free at the point of delivery, people are still going to loan charts to pay for social care. And social care is, of course, an essential human right um, for people like me um, and for anyone who uses it. So I would campaign um, strongly and every day for a national care service um, in our parliament. And lastly, um, I, as an activist for equality and human rights, um, I've been devastated to see some of the experiences of people of colour um, and of LGBT people, and particularly the transphobia that we've seen in the past year. And um, I would use my, my, my opportunity um, to serve in, in, in Parliament um, to, to stand up for the rights of those people, because um, it is simply not OK, um, the, the depth and length um, of the, the racism, the transphobia, the sexism and misogyny that we've seen in the last year, and um, that has dragged us back, I think, a number of years. And so I would use um, any opportunity I can. And incidentally, I, I, I should say, whether elected or not, I would campaign on these issues. Moving on to our final issue, uh, Scottish independence is becoming, or is, is seen to be becoming more favoured by young people. Um, Scottish Labour have made their stance on independence pretty clear. Uh, but why do you think that Scottish students should or shouldn't back independence? So I can understand why young people think the only way out of this is independence because they've not lived with a Labour government. So we've, Labour have been out of government now for some considerable time. Um, and and that that is actually a tragedy because as someone who I, I still consider myself to be quite young, I'm 39, but that's not all that young anymore, I suppose. Um, but I still, I still remember the, the value of a Labour government. I remember bringing in things like the minimum wage. Um, rights to holidays, the Human Rights Act, the, the Disability Discrimination Act Part 4, the extended rights to disabled students. I remember those things. I know what it was like to have a Labour government. I know how good it can be. But I understand why young people today will look around and go, well, we've got the SNP who have delayed using their social security powers, who have allowed child poverty to rise, who have allowed the attainment gap in Scotland to widen. And we've got the Tories who've created a hostile environment, a ridiculously hostile environment in the benefit system as well as in, in the country in general, um, and who have um, who, who have uh, given us Brexit. So no wonder people are like, what do we need to do? 
what I would say to those people, uh, what I would say to young people today is the reset you're looking for is not to redraw the border. The reset you're looking for is absolutely about socialism. It's about a better country for all of us. And it shouldn't just be for the 5 million, 6 million people in, in Scotland. But actually, my ambitions for a socialist society extend to all of the UK and actually broader than that into Europe and the rest of the world. Um, but we, we, we can, we've done it before, we can um, make these arguments, we can change people's minds, and I don't believe that we, that we start small, I believe that we continue to do that and make the argument across the UK for it. And so I would ask young people to, to remember at this election, we're, we're voting on what sort of government do you want, who do you want in power, do you want a Labour government or do you, do you want people who, do you want people in, in, in Parliament like like people like me, like um, who are going to focus on a recovery and jobs, education, communities, climate, um, or do do you want to to continue to go back to arguments we had before? This election is not an argument about independence. This is a, this is an election where you're going to choose the government that you have for the next four years, and it is incredibly, incredibly important that that government is focused on improving the lives of all of the people across Scotland and indeed across the UK. Uh, Holly Cameron, who until last month was set to run for Labour in this constituency, was removed seemingly due to her backing Scottish independence. Uh, this proved to be quite divisive among Scottish Labour at the time, so I was wondering if I could get your take on this. So I think um, the, the party have said that it wasn't about um, the, the opinions that she held, and um, there were other things going on. The people of, of, of Glasgow care when we, 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 we need a Labour government. And my main focus at this election is to do as much as we possibly can to make sure that we get as many Labour MSPs into Parliament. And it's a cred it's an incredible, incredible privilege to be able to, to come forward. And in particular, as a disabled woman, I'm so proud to be able to stand um, in this general election on the list um, and to be able to, to carry us into the, general, uh, the, the Scottish Parliament election um, with our social security brief. That is my absolute focus. And I know that it's the focus of activists across, across our party and um, in all parts of our party um, across Glasgow. Okay. Uh, before we wrap up, do you have any closing statements you'd like to convey? I just, I just want to um, ask people to seriously consider when, when you're voting this time round, please use both votes for Labour. We cannot go back to the arguments that we've had in the past. It's time to have a government focused on recovering in our NHS and health and social care. It's time to have a government focused on our jobs, on our communities, on our climate um, and our education. And if we don't have those things, um, then we're only going to be backwards, which is actually what we've been doing. The, the, the SNP have had 14 years in government now and their record is not good. And um, what you need is people in parliament holding their feet to the fire if they're in government or indeed being in government um, and changing the lives of um, the people all across Scotland. So I would ask, please um, give us the opportunity to serve you um, and the opportunity to, to really shake things up. And the final thing I would actually say on that is um, we, we cannot continue to get different, we cannot continue the way we're going and expect to get different results if we continue to put the same people in the room. And that's why, as, as a disabled woman, I fundamentally believe that we need to change the people that we put in Parliament so that their lived experience is very, very different and is represented there. Um, I, 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 I don't, I, I would never, I, there's no one else who's a wheelchair user who's ever been in the Scottish Parliament before. Um, and I think that that lived experience is incredibly, incredibly important. And if people value that, then I really, really want you to vote for it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this interview. And for everyone who's watching, please remember to go out on May the 6th and vote. And yeah, well, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.